doesn't know what that car chase scene is? If you don't know anything about movies and don't know anything about cars, you're excused. But you're here today to learn a whole lot about just that because we're going to talk about automobiles and movies, going through some of the history, some of the classics, some of the comic ones, some of the crime ones. And joining me today to help us get through all these movies include Todd Lassa from Motor Trend Magazine, Peter DeLorenzo, the publisher of AutoExtremist.com, and Jim Hall with 2953 Analytics. Great having you all here. Good to be here. Good to be here. Thanks, John. Jim, I'll start with you. Cars and movies, they sort of developed in parallel, didn't they? I mean, you can go way back and find cars and movies. If you look at the actual the spread of motion pictures, it's about the same time the automobile really became something that was interesting. And very early on in film, the, the thing about moving pictures was it was moving. So they would literally go out and photograph things that moved. So guess what they'd photograph? Horses, ships, dancing, and lo and behold, automobiles. As automobiles appeared, it was great to see these things driving around. And we actually have a lot of historic footage of old automobiles that exist because they moved to go take pictures of them. And it's, it's that simple. And trains. Well, yeah. <laughs> and airplanes when they came. I mean, right. if something moved, they'd, they'd photograph it. And, and crashed them all together, too. I mean, they love doing that, Peter. I mean, it, it seems to me that, and maybe it's just because it was Keystone Cops, it was Laurel and Hardy, it was W.C. Fields. Cars played a comic role in a lot of those early movies. Well, absolutely. And, but cars, you know, were such a part of the growth of the nation that it was almost inexorably linked with everything that was going on. And car chases just seemed like a natural. I mean, you know, somebody was doing something wrong and the cops are chasing them. So it got cars in it. It was great. Also, I, think, I think the parallels just go on and on. I mean, if you look at each country that... Uh, developed the car, uh, it was big in developing cars, Germany, France, the U.S. We all have our own kind of style of movies, our own kind of style of cars, especially in the early years. And, and you go up into the 1930s when, when we were in a horrible depression, and, and yet there were some great flamboyant cars, and uh, there were great movies about uh, rich people having great lives and dra- driving those great cars. Very escapist in that result. Exactly. Absolutely. Uh, it, the, the thing with, with, with cars and film that, that's sort of interesting to, to back up on is that, for one thing, a lot of people early on in cinema, and, and early, you know, we're talking about uh, in the teens, there weren't, you didn't have a lot of people with owning, owning cars. They didn't. So the films would let them see things and see cars do things they wouldn't normally see. Uh, the Keystone Cops is amazing because then you had cars and people inexorably linked with stunts. And you could, you could say that Senate was one of the guys that really popularized the idea of the car chase as comedy. And it worked really, really well because there'd be chases in films before. Um, D.W. Griffith's Great, uh, great Train Robbery has a, a, sort of an extended horse chase. And you could see it, it was drama, but car chases were funny. And they used them, you used to see them in, comic, in comedies far more than you'd see them in dramas back then. For one thing, remember that until sound came out, the concept of how a dramatic actor worked in a film was sort of weird anyway. You know, you had to overact because you had to commute everything with your eyes and your face and going things like. <laughs> so the, that went one way, but comedy is, is people doing funny things. And cars moving fast and guys hanging off the back or forming a human chain dragging on the ground might not be funny if you're one of the guys dragging on the asphalt, but boy, it sure looked good. That said, when when filmmakers try to make film an art form, take it out of the uh, kind of the penny arcade sort of uh, uh, milieu and make it an art form, cars were already a prop. And we've never really had a great car film. We've never had a car film where you'd say, that thing's going to win an Academy Award. There's never been, I mean, there, uh, there was Orson Welles, he tried to do a movie called Magnificent Ambersons. It was a follow-up to Citizen Kane, and it was about how the automobile changed the small town. Editors chopped it all up because, uh, because of Citizen Kane. He wasn't able to do uh, his own director's cut back then. So we don't know how good it might have been. Cars weren't only just in the early years, and in fact, Hollywood started to focus on the automotive industry itself. Peter, there's a number of movies about the car industry. Well, um, yeah, because we as a nation, I'm going back to this growth of a nation thing, but we were building our nation. Uh, We were populating our nation with automobiles, and the story of the automobile industry yielded some magic uh, moments. On and, film. and it's the story of America in a lot of ways. Yeah, exactly. Because the, the, you know, the, the building of roads just expanding was because of automobiles, and, that's, and everybody could identify that. Um, you, you have auto industry films where it's peripheral before the war. There's a movie called Speed with uh, Jimmy Stewart in it. 
And in it, he's a mechanic uh, that becomes an engineer that designs this new component for a car, and the only way to test it is racing. So they sort of were showing how factories got involved in racing, and it was, it was, it's, it's entertaining, but there ain't much reality to it. But it's pretty good. Well, well there may be this whole thing of, you know, uh, Hollywood looking at the automobile and how America's growing, but then there's Hollywood versions of what the industry is all about and how it works, Todd. And I'm thinking of one movie, uh, The Betsy. Tell us about that. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to throw this to Jim because that's <laughs> one of the few movies on our list we haven't seen. I'm, I want to talk about the other one. Uh, okay. Uh, the the, the, the Betsy is interesting. The, 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 there was a movie before The Betsy called Woman's World that was an attempt at doing a movie that was based in the auto industry, but the auto industry stuff was secondary to it. But The Betsy is about the development of a car, but written in only the way Harold Robbins could. So it has darn little automobile in it. Um, one of the high points is the, the turbine-powered Pinto driving through the alleys of downtown Detroit as they're trying to escape the spy photographers that know there's something special about the turbo-powered Pinto. I think Jim Dunn was in that one. Yeah, I think Jim, there's a Jim Dunn character in it. Uh, there's a character that is supposed to be um, uh, Ralph Nader. There is a subtext story that is supposed to be uh, basically... Henry Ford and Edsel Ford. But it and was a train wreck. It, oh, the movie was a horrible, it was a disaster. <laughs> but it, it, one of its interesting things is it's the only film that was actually photographed with the technical cooperation of AMC Design because they shot inside the AMC Design Studio. Which is they, on Plymouth Road in Detroit, still there today. Still, still there. there. And uh, the executive suites they shot in that building as well. So they, the AMC cooperated with them. The Betsy in the end of the film is a, is a rather poorly customized Lancia Beta Coupe. But it's supposed to have a turbine engine in it because of the soundtrack. And this is a movie that has Sir Lawrence Olivier in it as, the, as sort of the, the Henry Ford the First character. It's, it is, it's an amazing film. With oh. a great American accent, I'm sure. Oh, he can, he can, he can do accents. The yes, man can do can. accents. That's so true. what was the movie that you wanted to well, talk Black, about? Well, Black Test Car, I think, may be my favorite Black, car movie of Black all time. Black Test and Car. Which, yes. What's that? And it's a, it's a Japanese film, of all things, from 1962. And it uh, stars the Tiger... Uh, Tiger Pre Premier Sport, Pioneer Sport, Pioneer Sport, and the uh, My Pet Sport. It's uh, it's about two car companies spying on each other, and and uh, one is developing a sport car, sports car, the other one starts developing one in reaction to it. We screened this at uh, a Woodward Dream Cruise uh, party a few years ago, and uh, one of the industry people at the party said, you know, it's way too close to that. It's really like that. <laughs> too close to life. Yeah, too close to life. And uh, that's very scary if you see the movie, but it's a dark... Um, it's a film noir by Japanese it standards. Noir, right. um, it's, it's also a movie that gets into automotive espionage. It gets into engineering. It gets into the concept of pricing as a competitive thing. It's very, very astonishing. But it, unless you speak Japanese, it's a movie you read. Because <laughs> it's, read it, it's a subtitle. It's a subtitle film, yeah. but it's... It's, it's, it's a really intriguing picture, and it is, like Todd said, it's astonishingly dark. And, and worth looking at now, uh, given all that's happened to Toyota in the last few months, I think uh, we should take another look at that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to do that, but I'm sure that black test car isn't readily available, or is it? No, but we, I have it on DVD, so it's, you, you can, can buy it. From, it. Amazon has it on DVD. I don't, sure. I've never seen a download of it, at least not a non-FTP uh, torrent download, but I've never seen it. A proper download. You, you can buy it from Amazon. You have to you have to order it specially. You're not going to find it in your. Well, are there any video stores left? I, I don't know. 